talk about the memorial services. I'm not sure you can talk about that, but you know, there's one that we lost, and I'm supposed to go with you, and there's an another one, unfortunately, we lost recently, and now you're planning on going to another memorial service. Sad to say that so there has not been a month here that we have not had a memorial uh, ceremony or service. Uh, ceremonies are very beautiful events where folks who knew the uh, fallen hero can can gather to celebrate the, the life and the uh, service of the service member and, and simply allow the tradition of the military uh, to remind them of the bigger uh, cause for service and hopefully bring some healing to their lives. Uh, we take a video of that and we send it to the families. Uh, the families sometimes feel unattached at that point because they're hearing some tragic news and don't realize that uh, their son or daughter had a huge impact on people around the world, not only in Afghanistan, but on our unit as well. Uh, they're often um, filled with tears and great sadness. Um, one soldier had just arrived a few hours earlier, and they announced incoming. He did everything right. He went to his hooch, his tent, and that's where the mortar hit, and he was killed. His folks did not even know he had arrived uh, in theater yet. Uh, some folks have been in uh, combat three, four, five times, and, uh, and they think they, they've got it now, and, and they're getting ready to go home, and uh, things happen. The enemy uh, finds a moment, and we're doing all the right things, and still uh, somebody gets killed. So it's a, a sad reminder of war, the need to continue to pray that we will see a day without war, uh, and certainly I believe in the, the grace of God through the prayers of people back home that we remain safe from all harm, and that someday we can say war was something simply from the past. I'm glad to hear you say that because I'm one of these people that still wants to believe that too. I don't know if we'll see it, but I keep thinking someday a generation is going to rise up and say, no, this, is not, this is not accomplishing anything. So we'll have to keep holding the brain for that. Uh, talk about your chaplains, the, you know, as far as the great job they're doing. I mean, all of our soldiers. I mean, I, I'm just amazed every time I go through an uh, embed like this. I mean, I don't know how you all do it. I don't know how any, anybody does it out here. Let me introduce a, a chaplain okay. here. Yeah, please. Uh, uh, Have a seat. Chaplain uh, Tim Brown. Uh, chaplain is, is the uh, support chaplain here. Uh, when things go right, nobody thanks Chaplain Brown. And when the air conditioning doesn't work, when flights don't work, when things go wrong, it's, it's always his fault somehow in his unit as the uh, base support battalion. Uh, it it's always seems to be their fault. And it's, it's not, but uh, there are many contracts here. We've been here now for nine years, and there are four, they have 43 ongoing projects right now, building barracks, building uh, the flight line up to make, uh, make it possible to have larger aircraft to come in here. Uh, the, the less stops you have to make on the way, the safer you are, and so instead of having all the stops from the United States, Hopefully we'll get to a point of having uh, a flight from the States come, arrive in theater, and then from that location, arrive directly here. So uh, Tim's a great guy, and uh, he I'll, I'll let him tell you uh, a little bit about himself, but probably if you're looking at how many people, how many chaplains, uh, council people, his numbers would be in the hundreds uh, on a monthly basis of people who come to him to say, I just need to talk. I just need some support. I just need a, uh, a fresh face to allow me to vent, to allow me to talk goofy, crazy things and memories from home and what I'm going to do when I go home and all that, all that stuff that makes uh, the stories of war great. Hi, Tim. Thank you. Hello. Thank you, for both of you, for your service. Um, so you are Chaplain Timothy Brown. You're the tell your chaplain for 704 BSB, which is out of Fort Carson. Correct. Yes. Okay. Why don't you tell the people watching a little bit about yourself, how long you've served, and just okay. talk a little bit about your career. Well, I'm new to the Army. I, uh, I was in uh, civilian ministry for 15 years and actually was working on a, uh, another master's degree in psychology. And I saw a, a clip on Fox News, as a matter of fact, 
talking about chaplains and what they do. Some of the some of the things in there were like the interviews like this as well, and so I thought that's what I want to do. So I immediately called and uh, talked to a recruiter, and next thing you know, here I am, what three years later, I guess. But so I've only actually been in the army for two years, and this is my first deployment and my first unit. And I ended up at Fort Carson, which was pretty nice actually. I enjoyed that. So did you have a ministry in Colorado Springs or another city? Well, I'm actually from the South, okay. as you can probably tell, Can't tell by your accent, accent right? yeah. <laughs> and so in Alabama, and I served in churches there for 15 years, okay. and, and did that for my dad's a pastor, for, has been for 42 years, still in Alabama, and just ended up in Colorado, which was, like I said, pretty wonderful. Okay. Talk about what you do here. Right? Okay. Well, in the building you're in right now, we actually hold seven services on the weekend, two Catholic Masses. Uh, which uh, Chaplain Maddie uh, does. Uh, we did have some help there for a little while, and then from time to time we have a pinch hitter. But uh, we have seven services here: uh, two Catholic, two Protestant, uh, two Gospel services, mm -hmm. and uh, one LDS service. And then through the week, uh, we just, it's still pretty busy. There are Bible studies, and uh, sometimes we do briefs and things in here as well. So we, we keep the schedule. We make sure this is functioning on this fob because this is a pretty big fob and a lot of activity. Uh, in addition to that, um, I do the counseling, as he said, and once again, by nature of the fact that this is a large fob, it, it kind of increases the number of uh, counseling uh, sessions that I have, and as well as other things that we do. Um, so I, I am the 704th BSB chaplain, but in a sense, that's extended to uh, you know serving the fob as well. So that that number is pretty large. Uh, we do with the 704th. We do some logistic support. And so just like this morning, I was on the other side of the fob, sending off, I pray at each clip that goes out. And we've done quite a bit of those. I don't even know the number, but it's pretty large. So tell people what a clip is. Exactly, yeah. It's a, it's a logistics uh, support okay. mission. So we'll, we'll load up things that the outlying fobs need, whether it be fuel or water or whatever, and we'll send them out uh, to supply, resupply. And so we have soldiers doing that uh, weekly, uh, sometimes more than that. And so we, we do that, and it's just being on this FOB as a FOB chaplain, what I have learned in my first uh, battalion chaplain uh, position is that this one is uh, kind of multi-layered. Uh, and so, <laughs> that's that a good way to put it in. It's multi-layered, and so the responsibilities extend out uh, because of that. And in the next uh, building next door, there's a warrior resiliency room, which gets used as well. And soldiers come in a lot, uh, dealing with things, and just want to uh, kind of have a place to rest, relax, and hang out play a game, watch TV or whatever. So just a lot of uh, support, uh, support missions going out, a lot of counseling, a lot of services, just a lot of things happening at once. Is some of the counseling uh, issues with families back home the interaction to? Or? It is. There's Once again, it's varied as well. And uh, Chaplain Manny provides us a schematic where we can break down the types of counseling. Mm -hmm. What we do is confidential, so we don't put names right. or anything like that. But we can break it down in numbers and put the types of counseling in. And so we, we deal with marital issues, we deal with uh, just anxiety going home at this point because mm -hmm. you've been here for a year, you're adjusted and it becomes familiar. And so when you get back home, there are things that you're gonna face that are no longer familiar and you don't know how you're gonna uh, transition back into that. So a lot of that, uh, some, some things resulting from activity outside uh, the FOB and, and, and that kind of stuff we deal with as well. So just a, a very complex and multi-layered counseling uh, schematic. We deal with everything. From reporting from here in Afghanistan, I am Bob Calvert, your host at TalkingWithHeroes.com.